lesson that we're looking at is when believers compromise Christ's call to personal holiness. And so here's the letter. The letter to Pergamos is to the angel, the messenger, the pastor, the elder in charge of that church, write. And this is what that leader of the church undid the scroll that Jesus dictated that John wrote down that was mailed to them. These things, says he, that has the sharp sword with the two edges. What does that sound like? Hebrews chapter 4. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. So Jesus said, I'm the one who uses my word. I have the sword of the Spirit, the word of God. So Jesus said, I'm the one that uses the word. That's his title. The commendation, I know your works, where you dwell. Now look at what this verse says. Even where Satan's seat is, where Satan dwells. Did you know Satan is not omnipresent? At that particular time, this city had a gigantic stone altar shaped like a throne. And it was on, the, the picture I'm going to show you in a minute, it's on the side of a hill in the middle of Turkey, and this giant altar, and on top of it a throne, and it was called the throne of Zeus, the king of the gods. Well, Satan, obviously, Jesus said, liked it so much that he was hanging out, probably sitting on that throne, kind of like saying, I'm the real king of the gods. I'm the god of this world. So Jesus reveals where Satan was at that particular time, even where Satan's seat is. He likes Zeus's throne. And you hold fast my name and have not denied the faith, even in the days when Antipas was my faithful martyr who was slain among you where Satan dwells. And that's what I was telling you. In the same persecution where Smyrna was, were doing this, they were doing the same thing here in Pergamos, and Antipas was put inside that, that brass idol and was killed. The letter continues, I have a few things against you. You have there those who hold the doctrine of Balaam. That's Numbers 22. You know, you know Balaam. This whole concept of Balaam. Balaam wanted to die the death of the righteous. He just didn't want to live the life of the righteous. Do you remember Balaam? He was a prophet for hire. And Balaam, with his own mouth, said, let me die the death of the righteous. In other words, I want to go to heaven. But he seduced the children of Israel to commit fornication. And so he was immoral. He was a bad prophet. He taught their enemies how to ruin Israel. So that doctrine of Balaam was present in Pergamos. Caught, taught Balak, the, the king, to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed to idols and commit fornication. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. We already bumped into them. In Ephesus, the Nicolaitans, Nicolao, the power over the people. Now, this, this, uh, that's the base where those trees are of that giant altar I told you about that had the chair on top of it, the seat of Zeus. Do you know where it is today? Hitler imported it, and it's in Berlin. See, Adolf Hitler was very satanic, and that seat of Zeus was vital to him because he was an occultic practitioner. But it happens to mark where Satan at that particular time was hanging out. Uh, Pergamos also has uh, idols. Uh, the symbol for medicine, you know, the Aesculapius, the entwined snakes. You ever gone to doctor's office and seen those snakes around a pole? That is a portrait of the healing god Aesculapius. Uh, when Bonnie and I take groups through this city of Pergamos on Holy Land trips, we go through the Aesculapium and, and show people what it is. It's a tunnel like this, and you walk through, it's like a drainage pipe, real low ceiling, very dark. You're walking on a floor, and every six feet, there's a, a porthole in the roof of the of tunnel you're walking through where the practitioners would whisper, um, you know, the Aesculapium people would whisper down, to the people, and what they did to get healed is they laid on the floor in that tunnel and had snakes crawl over them. That was going to the doctor at that city because they believed that the snake had healing power and they would have the people take these um, drugs that would put them in a stupor, they'd lay on the ground, snakes would crawl over them, and the priests would whisper words from up above. That's the, the occultic power of this city. And what the Lord says in chapter 2, verse 14, you have those that, that do things to idols. 
Balaam made them take things sacrificed to idols and commit sexual immorality. And you have people in the church that are pulling in the Aesculapius stuff, the pagan, idolatrous, occultic stuff, and bringing it into the church. 